Tonight on Grilling with the Guru, it's the last show. What we're doing? Guru Tamales. Guru Tamales. They're going to have to come back. <laughs> you got to see this, guys. Tell them when it starts. Right now. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. We got a special treat. We do. We're going to take a, 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 a an average dish that a lot of people are familiar with. Humdrum. And we're going to guru it. That's huh? right. That's right. So, <laughs> so this is the story. Uh, we was in Houston recently at a trade show, and uh, we was at the uh, all, uh, the Burroughs Convention Center. Right. Largest building I've ever Huge. been in. My, huge. Huge. It's incredible. I'm Mas grande here. in Spanish. There you go. <laughs> so there was a little restaurant called Rustic, right, right there on the ground. So we went there to eat. It was really good. I was, but they had. It some, wasn't traditional tamales. It though. wasn't traditional. They had some tamales, a little version of them. So as I was eating them, I was like, Yeah, this is. And, we your, gonna, and your wife was like, We gonna be doing this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, she was the one that was like, Y'all need to do this. <laughs> say, oh yeah, well, this is done. We doing it. So, so, so this is actually not a hard dish to do because there's damn. not a lot of ingredients. A little prep time. Little prep time, yeah. But so worth worth the time. What's really good about this dish is you could use a leftover protein, right? Uh, that you may have, and actually one of the proteins we're using is called carnitas, and carnitas is basically Mexican pulled pork that Keith's been eating like crazy not right there. That, that's not true. That's not uh, true. Where you get that from? Let's, uh, this, can we roll the tape? <laughs> Let's roll the tape. Let's go back. I got witnesses, bro. <laughs> Matt's been having it rolling the whole time. Woo. Okay. So it don't it don't look great right now, but just like all great but, foods, just but, hang on. But you a can do this with chicken, which we and are. And we're going to. And you can do this with brisket. Brisket. You can vegetables. do vegetables. Vegetable. Absolutely vegetables. Sure. Yeah. So so basically, we're gonna a, a regular tamale uses masa, which right. is ground corn right. that they make into a paste. They put the they put the protein in the middle. They wrap it up in corn husk and they steam it for an hour and a half or so. We're not doing that. And look, that's fine if that's what you want to do. If you want. We got we to gotta work around. We got to work. It ain't going to take that long. So there's a couple tricks that we're going to show you that th so you don't have to go through all that labor-intensive stuff. And look, it tastes it tastes so good, we're doing it right here. Yeah, because you did a little trial run with you and your family this You better weekend. believe I did. And so what you going to season this with? Okay, so, hey, we want to thank... Uh, that's what I was... That's why I said Yeah, that. what a segue. <laughs> what a segue. Hey, this guy. Where's the love? Where's we want to thank uh, hey, Gilbert's Greatest Foods for providing us with Louisiana love, the best all-purpose seasoning on the planet. And we also all went visit our friends at La Morenita. Yeah, and I they got, got us, the real deal. Yeah, we got some, uh, we got some El Verando uh, seasonings. We got... Uh, this is a uh, Minuto Menudo mix. Yeah. And then we got... Uh, Rojo fajita season. Rojo is red, mm -hmm. uh, and then some cool. good old good old ground cumino. That, that tastes a lot different than McCormick's. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, look, I want to give you some props about your seasoning, though. Okay. I had some uh, leftover rice, you know, in the refrigerator yeah, yeah. because we had made a rice and gravy over uh -huh. the weekend, and so Saturday I woke up and I was I did some yard work and I was hungry, man. I was hungry, so I said, you know, I don't want to go and cook, so I went and get some rice and I got a big old bowl, just white rice. And I put a couple of dabs of butter in there, put it in the microwave for two minutes, and I and took some good. of your Louisiana love season. Dude, that good. was the best <laughs> rice. And look, my wife said, that's all you're going to eat with that? I said, that's all I need. I tell you, that's all I need. I'll tell you another one. Our good friend, Lyndon Frank, is with us tonight. He's watching the show. And my brother. <laughs> Gonna get him a Cajun smoker, baby. It's coming. Lyndon, <laughs> Lyndon sends me a text. Louisiana love on apples. I was like, okay. okay. <laughs> Look, I don't care if you throw it in your yard as long as you buy it. That's <laughs> right. And we're sponsored by the Cajun, the Cajun Grill. Grill and the soon-to-come Cajun, Cajun Smoker. smoker. Yeah. The, the last smoker you will ever They're buy. They're rolling off the line. They're building them right now as we speak. We should get them by early July, mid-July. Uh, Frank has said, uh, I want number one. Yeah. He got number one. And Keith said, well, number one's going to God. I said, shut up. Just tell him he's getting number one. He like got he knows. One. He, he ain't that numbered. <laughs> yeah, we got number one, number two. Hey, but look, let's throw it to break. Yeah, let's take we a little break. We got to get some prep right yeah, now. Yeah, we're going to do a little bit of prep work. Uh, we got a couple sauces that are made. They're homemade sauces. I made them at home. We're going to explain to you how to make them. They're really easy. One but of that's them, why they call it homemade. Homemade? Because you made it at home. You, you, ride, you dang right a deed. <laughs> and we're going to make our, uh, our pico de gallo that we always have with, oh, uh, yeah. with, with Latin foods. Yeah. And we, we're going to tell you about this stuff yeah, right here. Yeah, some, some beautiful red love right there. So come back. Yeah, y'all don't go nowhere. We're going to start prepping. Yeah, so you don't want to miss this. No. Last show of the season. That's it. See you in a couple.
Welcome back to Grilling with the Guru. Tamale. Tamale. Hot tamale. Guru tamales. Yeah. So, what, what you doing right there? Well, I'm going to cut a lime. Okay, we, we, we had the chicken thigh meat. That's some thigh bone. meat. Yeah, yeah, boneless, skinless. That's right. And we're going to just put a little lime juice in there Absolutely. with that. Absolutely. And then what's the, in that little, little, little brown red brown concoction right there? This is called uh, anata paste. Uh, this is called echote paste. Echote. It's made with anata seeds. Okay. Right. So it, it, it kind of smells like crab ball. A little it, bit. It does. It has a um, very strong flavor. But, but we, we use that on what? Uh, on something else. What did we on use? the turkey breast that we did. That's exactly The wild right. turkey breast. That? That's, that's, that's why I keep them around. Um, <laughs> anyway. So this is used for flavoring and color in uh, Mexican foods. So it comes in. Grab that for me, please. Keith. Yeah, boy. Right there. Boom. This is how you, you could buy it in liquid form or you could buy it like this. It's a paste. And you just thin it out with olive oil. That's what we did. That's, it. That's so, what we did. And, and it goes just like that. Keith is going to grill off these uh, chicken breasts after he mixes them up. Yeah, I'm just going to turn it And I'm going to tell you about how not to use masa Don't. when you want to make tamales. So traditionally, tamales uh, are, is, like we explained before, it's masa, which is a ground corn that is made into a paste. Uh, and then you put a protein in the middle. You, oh, you that heard wasn't, that? That wasn't loud at all. <laughs> you wrap it up in a corn husk and you steam them for an hour and a half or so. Well, that's very time consuming. It takes a long time to make them, a long time. So there's another way, guys. Corn grits. You could use corn grits as your base and you could put your protein. Everything will be cooked. So you'll lay your corn grits on the corn husk, put your protein, put them back on the grill to get some smoke flavor. And it's lighter. It doesn't, and, and tastes fantastic. So I was looking for some corn grits in the store I was in. I couldn't find them. Couldn't, couldn't find them. them. Couldn't find them. So I came across stone ground coarse yellow cornmeal. It's the same thing. So, and it, it, it's if it's just a says, little bit finer. A little bit finer. It has, bit. it has, uh, corn grits doesn't have any of the powder in it. This does, but this is going to work in your favor because it's going to make it a creamier, creamier mix. So the rest, the ratio is three to one grits to water. Right, so this is one cup of grits, and, and we got three cups of steamy hot water right here. It, re it, it probably should be boiling. It should be a rolling boil, but it's okay. Or in the kitchen, we're cooking like in an oven. Yeah. So it's going to be cooking 360, baby. Yeah. So, and don't worry. As the grits incorporate uh, with heat, they, it's going to start to roll. Just give it a little while. Not too much at one time. Just work it in there. After you have them all incorporated and they start to, uh, they start to hydrate and, th and you can see it's already starting oh, to thicken up. Oh yeah. You want to let them cook for about, um, you're going to add a half a stick of butter to this. Uh -huh. and use real butter, please. Yeah. And you're going to let them cook for about 15, 20 minutes. And you can see how it's real gritty right here. That's going to go away. Yes, it As really they is. hydrate, it's going to go away. You have to stir them every now and again. So don't just, uh, don't go check Facebook. Now you're going to put some of that heavy whipping cream in there? At the end. At the end. At the end. That's that's what's going to give it this final. So it's going to be that some season. Look at the look at the color on that chicken. Oh, that yeah. is absolutely. And we got cherry wood. Yes. We got some cherry wood Beautiful log in cherry there. Wood. So it's going, we got a little added uh, some, flavor in there. Some something. We got oh, yeah. some something. So let's let's go ahead and close this up just like that. And I'm going to cut me a half and then uh, cut me a half a stick of butter right here, and that's going to go in our grits. And then we're going to just let it sit. Oh, look for at it, it's starting to bubble like lava, bro. Yep, there look you how go. beautiful that is. There you go. That's all it takes, just like that. And then, so now we could, uh, yeah, we'll make our, we'll make our pico. Well, we you, need a, I need a. I uh, got it. You got it. I got it. Bro. You got your bowl. So hey, Fred, pico de gallo. Any self-respecting Latin cook. You don't want to buy that in a jar. No, you make it fresh every day. Every you make day. it fresh every day. If you go, if you're gonna have it, you make it fresh. And the reason why is because with the seasonings and everything in here, it starts to, it starts to mas macerate, right? Mm -hmm. So it loses all of its liquid and the salt. I hate, and I hate when, my, when that happens, <coughs> to macerate. You don't. You just think you do. Um, so what happens is uh, uh, the, the, the acid from the citrus and the salt starts to break down the, the chemical structure, the cell walls of the, of the fruit, of the fruit, well, tomato is a fruit, mm -hmm. of the vegetables. And before, after... 
four or five hours, it gets pretty pretty soft. It loses its texture. Make it fresh. Long so story just, short, make it fresh. Yeah, Kisi sound, make it fresh. Yeah, yeah. All right, so just like that. So you could cut your tomato pieces as large or as small as you would like. Uh, I like to get them pretty small because I like them to give up. Well, hang on there, but well, I, throw I like them to uh, <laughs> give up their liquid. You don't have to beat them up like he does, oh, but, right. but you can. You can. They've if been you a want bad them. tomato, yeah. Yeah. That's it, pas bon there. That's all right. We'll get them straight. All right. And then from from this, you add some raw white onion. Yes, you could use yellow onion if you'd like. Red. Uh, you can use red onion if you'd like. Yeah. You could use Vidalia onions if you'd like. Yeah. It's entirely up to you. Um, but I like using white onions because they're they're kind of in between. They're not that sweet, and they're not they don't have quite as much salt as yellow. Yellow onions are kind of whoo. Right. Whew. So that, and then of course the uh, you're well, going to add some seasoning, that. and then you're going to add some uh, citrus, right? And of course a jalapeno or whatever you'd like. What we got over there, baby? We got some beautiful chicken cooking right there. Look yeah. at that, man. Look, oh my God, that's beautiful. A lot of smoke. A lot of smoke. Look at well, this. Well, speaking of smoke, let's talk. Let's talk a little bit. I mean, people been watching the show. They, they kind of, they got some experts out there now. So, let's talk smoking woods. Yes, sir. You made a comment when we showed up. I've yeah. given you some fig branches. Yeah. Tell me about that. Oh my God. Talk about it. Well, uh, they're gone <laughs> because <laughs> I used them all. Listen, find somebody that has a fig tree in South Louisiana. Ask them nicely. The figs, well, figs are coming in season, so you got to be careful. After right. figs, uh, yeah, uh, you got to prune it. At, prune got. them back. Collect that wood, guys. Let it dry. How long? Put you let the it word on the street. Go on Facebook. Tell you. <laughs> Wake the kids. You call the neighbor. Don't, I, the first time I used it, I actually pruned it that day. It was green. And I bundled it, you know, and put some in the in the garage and safekeeping. But I, that night, I cooked some chicken, and yeah. uh, it was still had the milky core. Yeah. You know, uh, no big deal. Uh, it was just, just it, as delicious. It, it, it was an, it's incredible. Fig wood, but, but is that's what incredible. I'm getting at. I mean, you got fig wood, domestic. I mean, around here locally, we got set, people that have satsuma trees, yes. lemon trees, yes. grapefruit trees, melitons. Uh, you were talking about what with the pe the that pear, Bradford pear, Bradford pear. So, so what's the rule of thumb? What can you use? What can't you use? Do not use a resin or a sap bearing wood, yeah. pine, cedar. Oh, yeah. Any of that type of thing? I thought that kind of was just common sense. Stuff well, right okay, there. well, let's 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 talk about cedar <laughs> for a second. You cook salmon on cedar? Yeah. Why can't I smoke with it? Well, yeah, but you're cooking on the cedar. You're not cooking with the cedar. And besides, you, know you soak them in water so it doesn't reach that smoke point. Right. And you don't get the resins in your food. And actually, there's a better way to do salmon or any cedar plant. You use all the wood. <laughs> but and you'll but be yeah, fine. The, uh, the but the main thing is if it's a fruit bearing tree, uh, try it. Or a hardwood tree. And if you're not sure, just give us a call at the store. We have these different legends that show you different woods that accent different kind of proteins. Absolutely. And don't be afraid. Look, oak is great. Pecan is great. Hickory is great. That's fine. Use something else. Find yeah. somebody that has some cherry wood. Oh. You will not be sorry. I oh, promise. No, no, no. So, hey, we got to take another Let's break. Let's take a little break, brother. All right. So, uh, if we're going to continue doing this thing. Our grits are on. Our chicken's on. And we're going to be. It is on. It's on. It's, it's on like on. Donkey Kong. So, hey, find your way back over here in about two minutes. We'll see you in a second. Hey guys, time to take the chicken off. Let's get to hey, it. Hey, Matt, come check this out. Talk about. Look at here. Look beautiful. It smells even better. Oh guys, look at this. Ooh. That is. Look at the color on that's that. That's incredible. That's so good. So use that another of paste. And then what you got that's over there. That this one. is the carnitas, okay? So when you make carnitas, you cook them twice. You cook them once and they get real soft like this. And then once you cool them off, you fry them. Yeah. Now you don't deep fry them. Right. They all they have a the carnitas have a good amount of fat in them because it's a pork butt that you use. So after you let them sit, you just put them on a flat top or in a pan or whatever, and they're gonna they're gonna all get like this. They're gonna turn crust. That, that little Maillard effect. Absolutely. Yes. You're gonna have our little Maillard reaction going on, 
And me. that's that. And then you pulled the, uh, the I corn. I pulled the corn grits off because they were absolutely perfect. Yeah. So now we're going to, uh, I finished them with about a, a pint, uh, a half a pint of uh, cream. Yeah. Fresh lime. Good, excellent tip right there. And then just steep in that fresh lime and juice. And do it when it's hot. Yeah. Right when you take it off, we, we actually it. put it in the marinade whenever we're seasoning. Right. But some but you're going to lose that flavor. You right. are. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if how much we lost. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> I bet not that much. I bet you not that much. I either. bet you not that much. <laughs> mm. At least it's not good. Mm. Oh my God. Mm. <laughs> you make me lose my train of thought. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! That's a shame. Not really. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we have two sauces. Yeah, we and do. And they're both crema based. So we talked about crema plenty of times uh, yeah, on this show. Show, show them what that is. Yeah, but it's, it's Mexican table cream, right? So look. That's all, it's Mexican table cream. It's, it's like it's, yogurt, but it's not. Yeah. It really doesn't have much of a flavor. It's delicious. By itself, but when you mix it with all these other stuff. So mm. this one is a, uh, is a chili crema. And what it is, is we took our, our friends, our dried peppers. These are Guajillo. These are chili de arbol. These are pretty hot. These are hot, a little hotter than a cayenne. Right. So and they are, guys. Sparingly. Yeah. These don't have much heat at all, a little hotter than a bell pepper. More, more for flavor. More for flavor. You steep these in warm water until they're soft, and then you buzz them in a blender, and then you run them through a strainer. Oh, yeah. There you go, bro. Gotcha. And then, uh, thank you. And then uh, you just mix it with a little, you, you use a lot more of this, and not much of that liquid. That liquid's gonna be pretty peppery. Right, right. So uh, to that, you add fresh lime and some uh, Mexican oregano that we mistook for uh, Cajun cannabis. <laughs> so, and that's it's it. It's so good. And, mm. and some Louisiana Love seasoning. This is our avocado crema. Guys. We've done this several times on the show. This is avocado, fresh avocados, crema, cilantro, and lime juice, and Louisiana Love seasoning, buzzed up with a stick blender. That's it, that's all there is to it. God bless you. This reminds me of uh, when you do grilled oysters. They got all the special toppings. Like this is that's how that's how you make something ordinary special. Yeah. Okay. So it's how you top it and wait till you see the plating because it's really something. Y'all gonna like this, but so we have that. Our carnitas is cooking. So let's do it to break. Yeah. Because we're gonna come back one more time. We're gonna wrap the tamales up. Speaking of that, one more thing. Oh. When you get dried corn husks like this. Dry corn husks to make them on. Right. They got to soak for at least 30 minutes in cold water. Right. So don't don't say, oh, I got to wet these. No, it doesn't no, work that way. No, no, you got to soak them. They have to soak weigh them, them down. Weigh them down because they float. That's, That's right. right. So go ahead. Let's do it to break, guys. Y'all don't go nowhere. We got the tamales going on in the house. It's going to be last show of the delicious. season. Last show of this season. But it's going to uh, be super duper. I have, an, I have a feeling we'll have a couple special episodes. I don't know. Maybe we, we might have a blooper show. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We might have a show at False River. Oh, coming up soon no, at a no. theater near you. That's right, that's right. That's right. Come back and see you. Maybe to lead a band. Don't tell about it. Welcome back to Grilling with the Guru, guys. Man. I'm Kurt. That's Keith. I'm Keith. Yeah. That's a uh, corn husk that we've yeah. been soaking and, in water. And look, we, we were talking about how you tie them into like a little notch. Yeah. And it's just for? Just for presentation. It's just yeah. for pretty. It kind of holds the ends yeah, together. It, it holds the ends together and it, it makes, it, it fans it out this way because once you put a tablespoon or so, you fantastic corn goods that you make, oh, then you just, come, you just come right in with your carnitas. Which or your what? chicken, which is just Mexican pulled pork. Okay, there you and go. I'm saying just Mexican pulled pork. It's freaking delicious. So what we did was we took our carnitas and we uh, we fried them in their own fat we did. on the flat top. Yes. And it makes all the difference in the world. And then you do it with chicken and then like that. And then you just go straight back to your flat top. If you don't have a flat top, just do it on your grill. That's what I did at the house. Now, timing is everything. This can't sit long, okay? Everything's pre cooked. Two, two, three minutes. All you want to do is heat everything through. And then when we come and when we're done with that, we're going to have an incredible presentation where we introduce our sauces, that wonderful pico de gallo we made earlier. Ooh. Yep. Some fresh citrus. Some all, crema. All that business. You know, look, look, this, this one, 
I don't know. It's like rejected. It, it, it won't. Uh, you don't, it don't go on the grill. It ain't gonna make it. Mm, it, it ain't, make it ain't making the cut. It didn't make the cut. Oh, so yes. what? We got some more to make. Yeah. Oh wait, I'm I'm going away with I this know. stuff. Where you going? Good <laughs> oh, what? Lord. I thought you were done. No, I'm not done. Not done. So we're just gonna keep making these guys. And uh, so, what other kind of protein could they use? So we, like, talked, we talked we talked about brisket. Okay, it, this would be great with leftover. If you had some leftover barbecue chicken, always tough to heat up. Barbecue chicken, you microwave it, turns nasty, that type right. of stuff. This would be fantastic. Take it off the bone. Well, you know what my wife would like? What's that? Some fresh uh, freshwater bass. Oh, Lord. Pan seared. That would be awesome. And then break it up and put that on top of that? What you think, Lenny? That would be, <laughs> that would be fantastic. That would be fantastic. So basically, any protein will work. You could also go do great. No, you, you could go also do... Uh, a med you could also do vegetables. You could do a, a medley of vegetables on there. There's really nothing you can't do. This is a blank canvas, so use your imagination and then let me know what you did. Call Keith, message Keith and I on Facebook or email us and say, hey, I did this with that, with that tamale dish. We'd love to know. I made a mess with that one. It blew up, bro. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. We got one more to do. We're going to put these on the grill. You want, you want to tell them the Go ahead and get get them something to drink. Yeah, so and we're hey, gonna come back. We're doing is is Guru Tamales. Guru it's, it's tamales. for the last show of the season. Okay, yeah, and we want to thank all our faithful, loyal watchers and and viewers of our show. We we run into y'all all over Kadiana. Yep, we and love y'all, and we really we love, love the comments and and y'all y'all comments are that y'all really enjoying the show. And let me tell you. They don't pay us enough to do this show. Actually, they don't pay us nothing. Don't, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> if they did, it wouldn't be enough because we love it so much. We do it for free. Yeah. And no, actually, we, we do. We, we, enjoy, we enjoy it so much. So, hey, last segment. It's our favorite segment of the show. A la manger. You don't want to miss it. The plate up is incredible. But Come we, see us. We've actually been eating all along. Yeah, we have. <laughs> Guys, welcome back to the show. Ay, 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 baby! Hey. Ay, 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 ay. So look, we're not done yet. Uh. So we, we pulled them off of the flat top. We put a little uh, Monterey Jack cheese. If you had some uh, cojita cheese, that would be great. Some queso fresco, that would be great. Just to soften it up but a wee bit. But we're not done yet. Look, look at the So we have our beautiful crema. Mm, mm, mm. So look, just all this across, just like this. You know, it, it, there's no exact signs to this. A little of each, okay? And then Keith has this incredible fresh pico de gallo. Put a little bit of little, that. Little dollops of, of our avocado crema, just here and there. A little bit more for Santa Claus. <laughs> a little bit more for Santa Claus. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> ah! So that, look, and look, guys, this is what you're doing this weekend. Man. This is what you're doing this I weekend. Mean. And you kind of knew that it was time to pull it off. You said, like you said last segment, you don't leave it on the grill too long. Right. When when this started drying up, yes, it started browning. Three to four minutes. Right. Three to four minutes, and then the grits are going to start to firm up a little bit. They're going to tighten up a little bit. Right. Don't let this go too long because you'll either burn the husk or you just completely dry the grits out. Right. So y'all keep talking about it. Uh, <laughs> I'm. Uh, so look, I'm gonna try. I'm this. going. I'm gonna not talk about it. Oh, you're not fancy. I'm fancy. Mm -mm. How good is that? Mm. Mm. Isn't that delicious? Mm. So we did chicken and pork oh. carnitas. Okay, I, I got, I'm a big thing on um, texture. Right. And flavor. Love the grits with the hard proteins, the grilled meat. Mm -hmm. And then that, that soft, cool pico de gallo. Mm -hmm. The tomatoes the and crema. the onions. Yeah, it and hits. And that crema and the cheese. It's got everything. It hits all the notes. Mm. This Now, mm. the carnitas will take you about three or four hours to cook, so that's something mm. you would want to do beforehand, obviously. But once that's done, this we cook this in real time. It was. Thir 30 minutes from start to finish. And, and it's, well, it took 30 minutes to soak the corn husk, so give yourself an hour. Right. And that's it. It came together that quick because while 
everything else is going on. You make your corn grits, you stuff the corn husk in your mouth like he does right there. Mm. Hey, we're done for the season. I'm in love, bro. You're in that. It was awesome. We want to thank y'all so much for joining us for this season of Grilling with the Guru. We want to thank Gilbert's Greatest Foods. Yeah, we do. For And Cajun Grill for sponsoring us this year, this season and every season. And we mm. hope this continues to go on. Please patronize those good folks. We certainly wouldn't appreciate it. And we certainly want to thank you guys. We couldn't do it without you. None uh, but I, love. I didn't do that. What he said. Good like love. that. We will see you next season. Yeah. Thank you for joining us on Growing with the Guru. Ready? Ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs>